everybody and welcome to another Elite Dangerous tutorial. Uh, this is tutorial two in our sort of New Year's kickoff series. In this one we're going to talk about exploring surface bases and the type of types of things you can do there. Um, I wasn't able to find a mission that I liked for this one that was going to be easy enough to do, to do in a tutorial but I can show one of the things we can actually take care of which is exploring exploring a surface base and collecting the um, uh, the data points. So we'll go ahead and hop in our ship here. I have currently have a course set to um, a surface base on another planet in the same system, which is a small sized, low security surface base for the purposes of this tutorial. So we'll just go ahead and head over there. Ship released. Engines engaged. If you're unsure how to navigate uh, to find, to get to locations easily that you want to get, uh, get to, Check out tutorial number one. It covers navigating from one place to another, one planet to another planet, basically one base to another base. <clears throat> In this case, we need to gain some altitude so we can get into super cruise. There we go. Frame shift drive charging. Frame shift drive charging to engage super cruise. Four, three, two, one, engage. So now we fly <clears throat> our super cruise to this other location, which is currently obscured by the planet. So we need to fly um, up and out of the planet. Want to get out of get out of drop range into that band between OC and DRP. Those mean orbital cruise and drop, respectively. So that's sort of the um, milestones. For below OC, we're in orbital cruise. For above it, we're in normal super cruise. If we're below DRP, we're going to drop into, uh, into atmospheric flight. We don't want to do that yet. Or uh, planetary flight. Okay, let's go ahead and turn to, uh, to zero here. We can pick up as much speed as we want <clears throat> at this point. Vizcano Enterprises... Uh, Vizcano Horizons is over that way on another planet. So we'll just cruise over there. Lined up, leaving this planet behind. Turn off my lights, I don't need them anymore. Tutorial number three, which is the next one, we'll be covering points of interest. Uh, so you might have a mission to find something on a planet. And much like, you know, finding things in space for some of those recover space salvage missions um, you need to find basically a point of interest and in this case the point of interest spawned randomly on pan planetary surfaces so in tutorial number three we are going to cover how to locate those point of interests and interact with them and get your missions completed but for this one we're exploring a surface space <clears throat> and seeing what kind of interactions we can have there one of the things we could do at a surface space is if we had a mission to um, either retrieve some data from a particular data node or destroy a power generator or things like that uh, we'd be able to go and do those but in this case we're just exploring a base because we can and on any base you can always find uh, these data points and uh, we'll show how those data points work once we reach our destination here just gonna super cruise over This tutorial is going to be unedited. <clears throat> I'm not going to pare down all this extra dead space in between because it'll give you an impression of how long it takes to actually do these things. It, you know, it isn't that long. It's the hardest part. The longest part is really going to be super cruising, which is actually happening quite quickly as we gain speed. 20 times the speed of light now, 25 times, 30 times the speed of light. 40 times the speed of light, 50 times the speed of light. Oh, almost, not quite. <clears throat> We're getting into the gravity well of this planet that uh, uh, Vizcano Horizons is built on. Oh, yep, we made 51C. <clears throat> 52C. 53 and still accelerating. 
It's pretty impressive. Okay, we're coming up on our de destination, so at T minus 10 to the destination, we want to back off the throttle to the middle of the blue zone, which is about 75% throttle. And then we'll begin decelerating, just like we did in tutorial one. But this, in this case, instead of landing on a uh, landing pad in a, <clears throat> in a, like a starport city, we're going to be landing on the planetary surface nearby this installation. So we'll go over how to do that. Be sure to check into my regular Let's Plays, which I'm kicking off this year for Elite Dangerous Horizons. I'm looking forward to doing the Horizon Seasons. We'll be using all the stuff that I've done in this tutorial <clears throat> regularly. And other things, of course. You know, typical trading, space combat, exploring planets, going on the surface, <clears throat> collecting uh, materials, interacting with surface bases, all that good stuff. Okay, it's on this side of the planet, so I'm going to go ahead and dive a little bit below it. <clears throat> this ought to be okay. We are coming in too fast, so we're going to go ahead and slow down <clears throat> and come around. And ended up being pretty good, actually. So this is a little bit of a steep, uh, a steep glide. I like to have about a thirty-degree glide if I can. All right. <clears throat> now, an important thing about surface bases: every single surface base everywhere has a no-fly zone above it and in its vicinity. They do not want you actually flying over the base. If you do, you'll get trespasses. They might start firing at you, become wanted in the system, all sorts of bad things. So we're going to avoid that by landing a little ways away <clears throat> on the other side of this hill. Landing gear down. Actually, this is a pretty terrible landing spot. Let's go find a nice flat surface to land on. Like this basin over here. Yeah, this will work a lot better. And so when we're landing on a planet, you'll have these indicators here telling you um, how to orientate, orient your ship so that's in line with the surface. It says go down. Rotate this way, and when those lock in like so, and your ship will turn blue, the little circle underneath your ship turns blue, that means you are level with the surface. Just tap the down key that you have bound. I mind my thumb here on the joystick until you get nice and secured. <coughs> Excuse me. Now that we're landed on the surface, we can go ahead and deploy the SRV. This is the Surface Reconnaissance Vehicle. In order to deploy your SRV, your ship needs to be fitted, outfitted with a um, with a hangar, and then in that hangar you're going to put an SRV. So, before you can do these kind of planetary landings and get out and explore in your SRV, make sure you have those equipped for your ship. Let's go ahead and drive a little bit away from our ship here. Take a look at it. This is a 0.05G uh, system. So if we take a look at our SRV from the outside here, you can see this little zoom in. There's little uh, basically thrusters attached to each wheel. Those are going to adjust either up or down depending on the, the G load of the planet. 
So these ones are actually thrusting up to apply more downforce to give my wheels more traction as I drive around. On high G planets, they'll point down to actually make the SRV respond a little bit lighter. Back inside here. The best thing to do if you're not actually flying your ship is to go ahead and dismiss it. So we can watch as the hauler automatic pilot sends it away into space. Off it goes. With that thing gone, <clears throat> we can now go ahead and check out the surface installation over the hill. Yeah, this, this, <laughs> this thing is really floaty right now because of the low Gs. I have all my power distributed towards engines, so I have plenty of thrust to use in my vertical booster. <clears throat> now, as a low security installation, uh, I'm, I'm allowed to drive in there. They're not going to care if I drive in there in my SRV. Uh oh, I'm going to crash. Oh, rock. Even if they have a security zone, I can drive in there. They're probably not going to give a crap. So we can drive around and explore this little base installation. Let's see what there is. Over here is a hub access data terminal, or hub access terminal. That might be the, you might, we might want to scan one of those because of a mission. Here's one of the data nodes we're looking at. The data points. What we want to do, I'm going to go to turret mode. We want to find all of these. I'm willing to bet there's three in this base. And the reason I want to find them now is because once you act, there's number two over there. Once you activate one of them, you need to activate all three of them within a certain time limit. It's basically a race against the clock. So you activate one, the timer starts, you gotta go activate the other two or other however many there are before your timer runs out. Take a look around in the turret. We might see a power generator around here. Oh, there it is. You can knock out the power generator and totally disconnect all the all the defenses in the area. That's that same hub access terminal, isn't it? Yes, it is. So let's just drive around and see if we can't find that third data point. Usually there's at least three. This 0.05 G's is rough. Like this thing's super, there it is, bingo. Hiding behind that tank. <clears throat> now, these data points are actually open access. So let's take a look. Data point, active. If I flip over turret mode and target it, we can see that the uh, it says data point public. Public means you can access it without actually uh, assessing any bounties. So that's exactly what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to hold down the button that we have bound to our data scanner. Okay. We now have two minutes to scan the other two data points. So flip into reverse, flip into forward gear, head over to here. This one that we know is over this direction. <clears throat> Turn right, spin out, turn left. There it is. Turret mode. Target it, scan it. If you can't get your data scanner to work, um, go into your menu options and turn on the uh, option to have, to, uh, so we're firing automatically deploys your weapon, do, uh, deploys hard points. It's a known issue <clears throat> as of this recording. Frontier Developments is working on it so that you don't have to have that option selected since the data point scanner is not a hostile weapon and it takes so long to use anyway. Back into the turret, <clears throat> target the data point, and scan it. And there we have it, all three data points scanned. If we now go over to our transactions here, we see that we have a um, data point intel for Federation <clears throat> claim. 
So at any Federation planet, we can go and claim this and get a little bit of extra money for having explored all those data points. If we had other missions, like destroy the power grid, or scan the other data, the public access terminal, um, we could actually accomplish all those missions as well while we were here. But we don't. So we're going to go ahead and drive away. Now the trick is, for surface spaces like this, before we can recall our ship, we have to drive at least two kilometers away. So we're going to go ahead and just punch the throttle. Go tearing off across the desert. Until we are far enough away that we can recall our ship. <clears throat> Be sure to turn into, tune into tutorial number three. Um, in tutorial three, we're actually going to shoot at some sentries to clear out an area and find uh, a mission goal, basically. We also take a look at this wave scanner, which is in front of us giving us readings and how to use it to find things because it's necessary for points of interest so how far away are we almost there and that's good enough <clears throat> let's go ahead and recall our ship Boop. e brake turn no. <laughs> Recalling your ship after something like this takes a little bit of time. It's orbiting in space and it needs to actually have the automatic pilot fly it here. So we'll just hang tight. <clears throat> Looks like this tutorial is going to clock in at about 20, 22 minutes, which is just fine. Here it comes. Should be jumping in any moment. Boom, there it is. Look at that. <clears throat> We're going to watch as it lands down over here. ship will find a level place to land and then we got to drive over to it <clears throat> and get on board it's like it landed on top of that ridge whoa whoa So we just pull underneath Oop. until the blue board ship light turns on. Come on. Turn. There we go. When the board ship light is on, we can board the ship. Now with our cargo secured, <clears throat> it is time for us to, well normally we'd be heading, uh, heading into a mission turn in. So let's go ahead and navigate back to uh, Starport I guess. We just go to the Kixen Ring or Sixen Ring, which is literally in orbit around the planet <clears throat> that we're on right now. To take off from the planet's surface, apply upward vertical thrust. And hold it down until you kick off the ground. Landing gear up. <clears throat> Full throttle and head straight up and out, just like you would landing, taking off from a landing pad. Full power to engines. Super crews can't be engaged until we're at 2.5 kilometers. There we go. Frame shift drive charging. <clears throat> and we are on our way Four, three, to this two, outpost. One, engage. Orbital outpost. which is generally in that direction be behind the planet. So we'll uh, gain some altitude and speed <clears throat> to build up our super cruise velocity. Let's 
turn to 30 degrees to really get clear of this planet and get some speed going. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, there it is. It's now within line of sight. Aim at zero, the blue band, which is our maximum velocity, orbital velocity. And you can actually orbit a planet relatively quickly this way. But in this case, we're heading off to the six and ring. And we'll see if we can't turn in this um, data package. The further we get away from the planet, the faster our ship's gonna go. making sure my lights are off. No sense in having those on right now. We are crossing out of orbital cruise into regular super cruise <clears throat> and we're now going to start really picking up speed. Flying back to this ring here. We haven't even hit anything approaching light speed yet. 0.1, uh, 0.15 C. There's 0.25 C. Not sure why it's telling us to slow down. Must be flying by a moon or something. <clears throat> Point two five C. Continuing to accelerate towards this uh, this uh, space outpost, and there we go. Just broken through the speed of light. Uh oh. At about T minus ten seconds, is when we want to pull our throttle back for most efficient deceleration. So I had to kind of fly down and down and back up to make sure not to overshoot this thing. There we go. 20 million miles are 20 million meters away from it. <clears throat> 10 million meters. When this thing's down at 1 million meters, we will drop out of Super Cruise, which I've got bound to this button right here. There we go. <clears throat> Full throttle. Full power to engines. And uh, to ask for docking once again, we always do it within 7.5 kilometers. Docking request granted. And we have a strange pad placement there. <clears throat> That's kind of awkward. But we can deal with that easily enough. We're close enough to slow down to <clears throat> the uh, blue zone here, which is about 50% throttle on my throttle cluster. Full power to shields for incidental contacts with the station or other ships. Get myself lined up on the pad backwards. <clears throat> I'll show you a little trick. Okay, we're over the pad and we're backwards. Pitch straight up. So the station's over you, <clears throat> and then rotate. So the station's below you. Put our landing gear down. 
landing gear deployed. And we did pretty good. Shift into reverse, just fly a little backwards here. There we go. <clears throat> Let's see if we can't turn in this uh, data package. Contacts. Redeem all data point intel packages. There we go. So there's a quick 8,000 credits we can get just for driving around and scanning some um, things. And we'd have more if we had a, a mission for that as well. So that is going to complete tutorial number two. How to interact with surface, base, uh, surface bases and missions and stuff like that. For S and G's, we will take a look to see if there are any other missions here worth doing in some other <clears throat> at some other time. Come on, bulletin board. Uh, these are all available missions in space. <clears throat> no surface missions to speak of. But there you have it. That's it for tutorial number two. Tune in to, tune in to tutorial number three where we uh, take a look at a different type of mission which requires us to go find things at a point of interest. And we're going to talk about all about points of interest and stuff like that <clears throat> in that tutorial. So until then, keep flying and stay shiny. Goodbye!